In today's weather, we're heading into the second half of August. Hard to believe that it's here. That means we're finally getting to the very end of the summer heat. Looking out there in the Atlantic, we've got Hurricane Ernesto. There's a closer look at it on the infrared satellite imagery. At this time, it is a low-end Category 2 storm. Winds sustained at 100 miles an hour. Pressure fairly steady at 969 millibars, and it's tracking north-northeast at 14 miles an hour. Right there, that is the island of Bermuda. We're looking at a direct strike tonight at hurricane strength. You can check it out on the model graphics right here. The thick red line is the higher resolution deterministic GFS model. That's the primary model run by the National Centers for Environmental Prediction. And these other lines here, these are going to be the ensemble plots. It used to say small perturbation in the initial analysis, and we come up with different results. And this is a fairly widespread, so this indicates a little bit of lack of confidence in the final output, but that is going to be definite grouping right there on Bermuda, maybe passing a little bit to the east. If that pans out, that would put the island under the weaker flow on the west side of the storm because you subtract out the forward motion, 100 miles an hour becomes 80 miles an hour. Looking at the Bermuda Weather Service radar, starting to see some of the outer bands affecting the island, and we can just about make out the center of the circulation about 250 kilometers south of Bermuda. So what is that? Uh, it's going to be about 150 miles motion of 15 miles an hour. It's going to be probably about 10 hours from now. So what is it, 2 o'clock? Probably about 2 in the morning central time, 3 or 4 eastern time in the morning. I'm not sure what time zone they're on, but uh, anyway, that gives you a basic rundown of what they're expecting. Shifting our attention to the United States, a very typical weather map for August. We've got a outbreak of polar air coming into the northern plains and parts of the Corn Belt. Temperatures down into the 70s and lower 80s. In the Ohio River Valley, the central Mississippi River Valley, that's going to be a warm sector. You can see that flow is out of the southwest, temperatures about 90 degrees, and some very rich moisture, dew point temperatures in the mid-70s. And we can follow those 70s all the way to Texas, some tropical influence right there. All that is rich moisture, and we only dry out as we go west into the higher plains. And we are getting a little bit of upslope flow there in Colorado. Some activity along this frontal boundary in Kansas. And they do have a severe thunderstorm watch across parts of southern Kansas, especially around Wichita, but they've had this outflow boundary blow through. So looks like chances for severe weather are on the decline. Out ahead of it, though, some continued chance of strong thunderstorms in southeastern parts of Kansas and maybe in these border areas of Oklahoma as well. In the northeastern U.S., yeah, we've definitely got ourselves a frontal system in the Great Lakes. Numerous low-top thunderstorms in the upper peninsula of Michigan and across Wisconsin as well. Fortunately, the severe weather chances are not very strong. Most of this area in a marginal risk. We've already had some clusters of storms going through Charleston, Detroit, earlier today. And these precipitation chances will pick up through the weekend. We're looking for a very rainy period across the northeastern U.S. We'll cover that very shortly. In the southeastern U.S., marginal risk for severe storms from the Tri-Cities area, Atlanta westward. A slight risk of excessive rainfall expected around Chattanooga the mountains in the southern Appalachians, and we pick up excessive heat advisories in parts of the southeastern U.S. Those are going to run from about Memphis and Hattiesburg west all the way into Texas, all through this area right here. You can see that the temperatures are really not that bad, lower to mid-90s, but those dew points are way up there. That means we're going to be seeing heat indexes anywhere from 105 to 115. 
pretty quiet day in the south central U.S. Not sure why the imagery is glitching out like this. I'll cut down the frames and that'll help a little bit. There are the usual storms going up orographically in central New Mexico on the Sacramento Mountains. Other storms in the high plains of the southern U.S. around Boise City. And of course that activity back behind the front. The front, as we mentioned, that's running somewhat like that right there. Yeah, let's check that out. That's actually from just south of St. Louis all the way to south of Dodge City. So that's going to be actually right in here. The north central U.S. under the influence of this cold core low. Let's take a look at the 500 millibar chart and get a better view of this. And there it is, a cutoff low there at 500 millibars located around Duluth. If we drop down to 700 millibars, we find it directly over Duluth. And at 850 millibars, pretty much in the same position. So if you've read my forecasting books, you're aware that is vertically stacked. And that indicates the presence of a barotropic, or I should say a quasi-barotropic, low pressure system, which is, in effect, a cold core low. And this is what we're talking about here. This is a cold core barotropic low. This goes from a weaker low pressure area near the surface to a stronger low pressure area aloft. Shifting our sights west, we've got a subtropical high centered across southwestern New Mexico this afternoon. The influence of that high extends all the way from Arizona into North Texas. That elongation there to the east, that's one reason we're getting some very warm temperatures across the southern U.S. That subtropical high certainly taking its toll on the monsoon pattern. Seeing a little bit of convection there in the Mogollon Rim, the White Mountains, and the Western Continental Divide area of New Mexico. These are the probabilities of precipitation. Looks very dry across the Central Rockies. Best chances. Those are going to be, yeah, in the White Mountains, especially around, what's that, uh, St. John, Eager. Not too familiar with those towns. And a little bit of enhanced probability around Nogales. Tomorrow, though, yeah, really picking up there as some of the monsoon moisture makes its way north, combining with some of that stronger flow in the northwestern U.S. And you can see over the next few days, numerous precip chances in the central Rockies and possibly all the way up towards the Bitterroots and the northern Rockies as well. There's the weather map in the western U.S., a little bit of enhancement of the pressure gradient in the Great Basin area, the high deserts. As a result, we've got red flag warnings through that part of the U.S. As we go into the northwestern U.S., we've got flash flood watches in effect for Saturday in the Cascades. There could be very heavy rainfalls in the higher elevations. And with those burn scars there, could see some torrential runoff. Heading into the Gulf of Alaska, looks a little bit stormy there. Westerly flow, and as you go further to the west, we get into southerly flow. So we're kind of in between that right now in Alaska. A very wet pattern, southwesterly flow, and we're going to be seeing those high wind warnings in effect. Those are in effect already, I think. I haven't checked on that, but they are looking for problems right in here from Denali National Park to Fort Greeley. South winds gusting to 75 miles an hour. Large wind advisory in the central part of the interior. The western coast, they've got coastal flood advisories, high surf advisories. You can see those winds there up to 33 knots. I guess it's going to be just south of Hooper Bay. And as we head into the Northwest Territories, downslope flow in that region. In the Canadian prairies, we've got air quality advisories all through the prairies, basically through this region right here. That's due to that persistent wildfire smoke. Heat warnings in Moosonee, which is going to be right in this area. You can see we've got a 90 degree temperature right there. Wildfire smoke all through there. And that is pretty much it for Canada. A couple of severe thunderstorm watches, one there in Nova Scotia, another one out near Penticton, British Columbia. Returning to the lower 48, let's take a look at the upper air charts over the next week. We can see that the subtropical high remains fairly stationary. A little bit of a 
ingress into the Texas Panhandles, maybe Oklahoma there, around Sunday or Monday. That's going to coincide with a spike in the temperatures in North Texas, Oklahoma, and West Texas. And gradually that subtropical high recedes there into New Mexico and just kind of a stagnant weather pattern, although this is a bit of a wild card little cutoff low there. Looks like it's drifting maybe to the southeast along the Texas Gulf Coast. The rest of the country under westerly flow, although a little bit of troughing off the west coast. This could be a concern for later next week. You can see a little bit of a what maybe resembles a wintertime pattern in Northern California, although this time of year it's going to be much different, more of a cold core type system, convective instability, and some strong surface winds. And up there in Canada, strong westerly flow. That'll keep the systems moving along very rapidly. Little short waves embedded in the flow. And that takes us on through the end of the period. And yeah, I should point this out right here. Strong anticyclogenesis there in the southeastern U.S. up to the Midwest. That could indicate a possible heat wave developing late in the month from the southeastern U.S. up towards Chicago, Minneapolis, and Des Moines. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the maps into motion. Starting out with tonight, frontal system sinking into the mid-Mississippi River Valley, into the Kansas-Oklahoma border area. Then we go into tomorrow, and I'll bring this up to peak heating. That's going to be right about there. Numerous storms through the southeastern U.S., mostly ahead of this frontal boundary, which becomes stationary. Numerous storms developing in Utah, eastern Arizona, all the way down towards Douglas, Arizona. There will be a slight risk for severe storms in eastern Kentucky and around Huntington and Cincinnati, pretty much on the eastern quadrant of that low pressure area along that frontal system. The main risks will be hail, convective winds, and maybe an isolated tornado. Good chances for rain all through the eastern Great Lakes, down into the Appalachians, all the way to Alabama. In the south central U.S., it will be the hottest day of the period for Oklahoma, looking for 102 at Oklahoma City and 98 at Tulsa. Both of those will be the hottest day of the week for those cities. In the north central U.S., upslope flow producing a few strong thunderstorms along the Kansas-Colorado border. Burlington, Goodland, a very low end risk of hail and high winds. In the southwestern U.S., subtropical high shifts into eastern New Mexico, sitting about right there. And that will open up the monsoon pattern. You can see it's quite active there, looking for a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms in Utah and far northern Arizona as that very active monsoon pattern sets up. And Salt Lake City is under the gun. Main risk is going to be strong convective outflow winds, very high precipitation chances in western and central Utah, even Caliente right there, looking for a 60% chance of rain. And we continue on into Sunday. Bring that up to peak heating. That's going to be Sunday at 7 p.m. Occluded front in New York and Pennsylvania. A mature frontal system. That's part of the polar front right there in the Chesapeake Bay area front all the way down towards Atlanta, down to Texarkana, and recurving back up into the high plains. And numerous storms across the Rockies with that monsoon pattern. In general, we're looking for a elevated risk of excessive rainfall from the Poconos all the way down towards Philadelphia and Baltimore. Rainy all through the northeastern U.S. except around Boston up towards Portland. We do have a marginal risk of severe storms all through the Carolinas, down into Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, even as far west as Little Rock, Hot Springs, and El Dorado. In the south central U.S., the subtropical high shifts into the Texas Panhandle. This will be the hottest day of the week for North Texas, looking for 104 at DFW. Further north, strong storms continue on the high plains from Goodland, North Platte, Scotts Bluff, all the way up to Rapid City along the tail end of that front. And as we mentioned, very rainy in the central Rockies. Chances for rain also increase dramatically in Colorado for Sunday. All right, let's take that forward into Monday. 
There is peak heating on Monday. Looks very similar. This system in the northeast continues to slowly push eastward. We are going to be seeing high precipitation chances all across the northeastern U.S. as we still have a lot of residual instability. Temperatures in the mid and upper levels still rather cold with that troughing sitting over that area. In the southeastern U.S., bands of storms will be found all across northern Florida and southern Georgia. In Texas, continued hot, especially in, in the central part of Texas. Looking for 103 at San Antonio, 103 at Austin. Those will be the warmest days of the week, both on Monday and Tuesday. A big warm-up in the southwestern U.S., looking for 113 at Phoenix, 104 at Tucson. Those will be the hottest days of the week in that area, and we're looking for 109 at Las Vegas. The monsoon shifts a little bit further to the west, and we continue on into Tuesday, cold air filtering south. So we're going to have a couple mornings of 40s and 50s in the Great Lakes and northeastern U.S. Rain pushing down into Florida and heat continuing in west Texas. Although in the east parts of Texas, some cool air starting to filter in as this backdoor front moves into the state. See, there it is pushing slowly to the west through Houston and Dallas that will bring the temperatures down just a little bit and maybe the rain chance is picking up maybe up to maybe 30 40 percent chance or so then we go into let's see Wednesday very hot day in West Texas 103 at Midland and the monsoon pattern picking up once again in the Rockies after a very short drought on Tuesday and this is the rest of the period kind of a stagnant weather pattern. I'm not going to go into this too much, but you can check it out and see your favorite area. Looks quite active in the northwestern U.S. The rest of the country, big high in the eastern U.S. And that's going to do it for the forecast. So what can we say? It's a typical quiet August weather pattern. We'll be back once again on Friday for the private supporter video. So if you're not a supporter, you'll want to get signed up for that. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Wednesday for another edition. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.